Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to TND's Court of Spades campaign. I am always, as always, am your DM for the night, Emily. I will also be playing my tiefling mythical beast, Nyx. And after we do introductions, I'll give a recap of what happened last week, and then we'll hop right into it. So let's go down the line. Hello, everybody. I am Nat, and I play the only healer on this party, uh, the druid Josephel Amaric. Hi, I'm Liz, and I play uh, Marin Marlow, two half elf wizard. Hey, what's up? It's Detroit playing Peter Longbottom, the halfling bard. <laughs> I protest uh, Nat's decision to say they're the only healer when we have a bard in this party. <laughs> yeah, I actually would argue that Nat is the only non-healer in this party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, keep, I keep remembering that, but I don't think bards can... Um, I don't think bards they get, can they heal. Have, well, no, they can heal, but if they have the spell prepared, like, they know a certain yeah, amount. I don't, think, I don't think they can yeah. swap out spells after they've already picked them is the problem. Yeah, no. They no. Can't. And you yeah. haven't really gone the healing path of Bard, have you? <laughs> nope. I'm basically, hey. like, playing the rogue. <laughs> Listen, Nyx can sit in the sun for ten minutes and heal three people, so... Photo the power of photosynthesis. Absolutely. So, to recap what happened last week, um... You guys were still... still in that mirror maze. Um, however, this last time you... Came across yet another dead body, uh, and looted it for what it was worth. Jez, you were the one who did the inspection of the body. You noticed a few things about it. You picked up, I forget, what was the thing you picked up other than the store? Uh, I mean, the bow off the body. I picked up a guild letter. That's right, that's right. Um, and... Also, like, you picked up, like, a s scraps of, like, a herbalism kit or something like that. Um, yeah, that's true. But, sorry, I don't have, like, <laughs> I don't have notes in front of me. That's why I'm kind of being, like, uh, specifics? Don't know them. Um, but, yeah, so you encountered that body. Uh, walked past it for a bit and then decided that the best course of action would be to retrace your steps and try to locate the room with the clock in it. Uh, due to the fact that you had a small child with you, and every time the clock struck, it's, it's next danger. Um, the child was very close to death uh, when it was Our unable boy. to save. Yeah, Our when boy. he was unable to save. <laughs> Our boy, no. <laughs> so uh, you did try to retrace your steps using one of Jez's spells. However... Uh, before you could retrace them all the way back to the original room. Jez, I believe you picked up on a flash of red out of the corner of your eye, down a fork in your path that you had not encountered on the way from the room, from the initial room. Um, and the party decided pretty unanimous unanimously to follow after the glimpse of red as opposed to continuing to retrace your footsteps so that plan was abandoned and you discovered that the red uh, belonged to the cloak of Thena who had been searching for you in the maze ever since you disappeared from the, uh, the tent above and oh then the clock struck again and you encountered another small masked figure which you quickly charmed and revealed to be yet another child this time it was a young human girl um and when you removed her mask you discovered that half of her face had been mauled and was missing an eye uh, however this one is able to speak to you Though she doesn't seem to indicate having any more memories than the boy you've encountered, or even Thena. And with that being said, oh, I guess I should bring up the last thing that happened, which is Nyx resolutely decided to walk into the mirror in which the child emerged from. And after a few moments, you heard his voice call back through the mirror, Guys, this is 
So, with that being said, whoops, hello, why did that? You guys gather around the mirror in which Nyx has now disappeared fully through. And the girl you just encountered, as well as the boy in your arms, Marin, seem nervous, almost. Like, you can feel a bit of tension start to fill the air around you. And they are noticeably nervous about your approaching of this mirror. Um, the girl makes no move to follow you into the mirror. And the boy in your arms, Marin, um, struggles a little and indicates that he wants to be put down. Um. Okay, I, I put him down. Or he... I, I guess I crouched down so he can get off my back. Okay, he, uh retreats away from you and goes to join the girl on the ground, kind of, and they huddle together, and it's a bit strange because it indicates that they might be familiar with each other, or perhaps it's just instinct driving them to comfort each other in this moment, as they both look with a bit of dread towards the wall. Do all of you follow Nyx into this mirror, or does somebody uh, remain behind? Um, Wait, okay, okay, guys. Well, so it... someone should probably stay with the kids. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say Jez probably stays with them. Okay, because Mary definitely wants to go with Nyx, at least for a second. <sighs> I mean, I'm worried about the kids, though. Oh, <sighs> yeah. I guess, I guess, I gotta follow Nyx. So, I mean, Jez, if you don't mind. This, this is fun. I think okay. I probably have the most child experience anyway, so... And you can speak Elvish, right? I also speak Elvish. I always want the child. <laughs> what? Did, did Peter say that he has always wanted a child, or once was a child? I was once a child. Okay. <laughs> you can't tell from my stature, but once I was a child. <laughs> Alright. It's just the same size, but slightly babier looking. <laughs> um, so, Jez, you remain behind. So I, you move to uh, sit b beside the kids, uh, making sure to provide them with a sense of comfort. And I'll return to you in a second. Um, but Marin and Peter. You two decide to follow Nyx into the room that he has beckoned you into. And as you pass through this wall, you, um, who goes first, Marin or Peter? Uh, Marin's definitely, like, already at the mirror. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm following up behind. Okay, uh, Marin, as you try to press against the mirror, your hand goes right through it. Thank god. Um... And you actually kind of, like, stumble a bit forward, not quite expecting it to not have a solid surface, as this entire maze has so far been just an illusion covering a solid dungeon. Uh, so when you stumble forward, you kind of smack into Nyx's back as he has not made any progress into the room he's standing in. Uh, Peter, you follow behind, and as the two of you kind of peek around Nyx's shoulders to examine what he's looking at, you look around and you see, for the first time, a room that is not filled with mirrors. Instead, the walls of this room are painted a soft, almost comforting yellow color. It's something that is almost reminiscent of a nursery. There are crayon and marker drawings kind of scribbled on some of the walls. Um, stick figures and rainbows and nothing quite in particular, um, there is a single cut 
sitting in the middle of the wall off to your left. And scattered on the ground are a few toys. And in the back of the room, there is a single mirror. However, this mirror is not like the ones you've seen so far. This one is a stand-alone mirror, so it's kind of built on a stand. It's not, it's not, re like, representing a panel of the wall. Um, and it looks like the bed has been slept in fairly recently. But it doesn't look like there's anything currently living in this room. Uh, I'm, I'm not getting good vibes about this. Yeah, you could say that again. Oh, there you are. Whew. I was wondering where you went. You need, you need to stop running off like that all the time. I was... Here, I was right in front of you. You walked through the wall, and I was standing right here. <laughs> Listen, the first thing I saw was your kneecap, so that could have been anyone. <laughs> I have, like, a tail... Okay, it's not important. <laughs> What? Like, what the fuck is this? I'm not sure I want to know. Would anyone like to walk about the room or examine yeah. anything? Can uh, I walk over and check the other mirror? Yes, you can. Do you have any good stuff? Yes, I'm going to cast a and walk around the room. Um, I would like to. Uh, perception check on the broom to see if I can find like any any items of like noticeable detail or um, like yeah like any like very specific like very obvious like personal items or um, even like yeah yeah just basically like any personal items things like that things that would be like that would stand out so okay um. Let's see. Okay. Fifteen? Fifteen? Alright, um, I'll get to you in one second, Mary, and I'm gonna do Peter's check real, uh, first yep. real quick. So, Peter, as you kind of glance around the room, you start to kind of sift through a couple of the items that are just kind of sprawled about here. Uh, you find a couple, like, three or four bags that seem to have once belonged to someone. The contents aren't really much, it seems. Some of them have dolls in them, some of them have, like, a blanket or some food. Um, one of them actually contains a letter to someone's relative. Mm. Um, but nothing, nothing about the names included in the letter really, like, ring a bell to you. It's, it's definitely not anyone who was prominent or that you would know of unless you knew them personally. Okay. Um, the sheets on the bed have been, have not been made recently, indicate, and there is a slight indent in the bed indicating that there was definitely someone sitting there. And the indent is rather small, so from what you can tell, it was definitely a child. Only ever occupied by a child. Yeah, it was only ever occupied by children. Um, you kind of examine some of the drawings on the walls. Am I sorry? Am I breaking up at all? No, you're good. Okay, my my um connection was wavering there for a second. I was just making sure. Um, so you start to walk over to the drawings on the walls, and it's interesting because though there are um stick figures drawn on the walls, um, it doesn't look like the typical scene where a child, like, draws themselves with their family. It always seems to be either a lone stick figure or a stick figure surrounded by three larger figures. And in one of the drawings, you actually see a drawing of a young girl following what looks to be a red, like a red hood. Uh, that's about all you can discern as you uh, investigate the room around you. There's nothing else that's really of notice or of use. Gotcha. 
Okay. Oh, I will say one more thing. As you glance into the corner of the room, there is a chest, a large chest. It's kind of more like a like a closet almost, but like a smaller one. Mm -hmm. About like yeah, so it's like half the size of a closet. Um, but it does have like a door that opens and it's closed right now. So you can't really see what's inside it. Okay. Um do can is it do I know it's locked? Can I open it? It doesn't seem to be locked, so if you'd like to go open it you can. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a peek inside. Out of curiosity. Okay. Um, it's kind of, uh, where the mirror is, where Marin is approaching, it's kind of tucked in the corner, um, beside that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as you open the door, you notice that it is actually stocked with short swords and other oh, various, fuck. like, small weapons. What the fuck? There's, um, on the actual door itself, there are slots that are holding daggers, and then on the inside, it's basically, like, one of those things that almost, you see it, like, weapon shops where they have, like, guns leaning into them, except there are swords lined yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a weapons cabinet, um, yeah. One of them is missing, and one of the daggers is missing. Hmm. Uh, could, could I tell from just, like, uh, recognition that they look like similar weapons to the ones that our previous children were carrying, just by memory? Or are they all kind of, like, uniquely, uh, like, different designed? They're- they're just generic, they're not, like, nothing about them is enhanced magically, or they don't look like any kind of intricate crafting thing. It looks like a standard weapon that you'd find at any armory. Right, right. But you can kind of make the, like, deduction from seeing that and knowing- noticing that there are two weapons missing, and the first child you encountered had a short sword, and the second right. child you encountered had a dagger that, like, most likely, that was, like, this is where they picked those weapons up from. Why do I get the feeling no, they're arming children? To... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go to Marin now. So, Marin, as you approach the mirror in the center of the room, um, could you make a perception check for me, please? Yes, I can. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> 25. 25? Yeah, okay. 19. So you walk up to this mirror and... For a moment it... Catches you off guard and you stumble... Take like a slight step back as um, it doesn't... Reflect you yourself back at you for a moment. Uh, for a moment, you actually see the faces of strangers, but they're all young, and they all seem to be tired or injured or crying or scared. And you are seeing the faint reflections of children that you've never met before. Um, and then. Um, I'm going to need you to make a charisma saving throw. Ooh. Oh, mm, that's good. Thirteen. Okay. Marin, as you approach this mirror, leaning in to see what what the reflections are, who these children are, you feel suddenly yourself become a little faint and you begin to waver and the last thing you hear is Nick scream Marin! And you are absorbed into the mirror. What the fuck? Christ. God damn it. As you kind of awaken within within the mirror you stand up and it's like there's nothing around you everywhere you see, you look it's thick fog you can't see maybe 10 feet past your line of vision but there's nothing to see there's just empty thick fog and the mirror is Nowhere to be seen. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Um. I look Naturally. At my hands. Yep. Go ahead. I look at my hands. Uh huh. Do my hands look like my hands? Your hands look like your hands. They are blackened and charred, but they are definitely your hands. Oh, great. All right. Well. Naturally, as this happens, Peter, you see Nick surge forward as he goes to chase after Marin. And he's going to make a charisma saving throw. As he sees her. himself <laughs> reflected in the mirror. <sighs> that is a 10. I hate him. Peter, you turn around to see, just as Nyx reaches the mirror and tries to slam his fist against it, you just watch, before his fist can even impact the surface of it, you watch him kind of turn into this dark smoke before being completely absorbed into the mirror. And Nyx wakes up in the same kind of space as Marin, but Marin is nowhere to be seen. And the mirror is also nowhere to be seen. You dumb son of a bitch. Oh, sorry, was, did, the, did the mirror disappear with the smoke? No, the mirror is still there. Oh, the mirror is still there. there. Nyx okay. disappeared in into the mirror. Smoke. Okay, into after, the mirror and Papa smoke. Yeah, after Marin. What the fuck? He like, looks around, just like puzzled, just like... Think here. Okay, okay. Uh, damn, I don't have any more of the spell magic. <sighs> I guess I'll touch the mirror too. Okay. I guess um, I don't know what else to do. Peter, you ran up to the mirror. Um, searching, looking into it, trying to see um, any indication of what happened to your teammates, and... Yeah, I'm like patting around, I was like, is this, like, is this a trap? Like, what, what happened? What's As you on? kind of stare into you, you start to see the faces of these, these, strange, these children that you've never met before, and oh. for a moment, you could swear you see Marin's panic expression pass in front of you, and then I'm gonna need you to make a, a charisma saving throw. Oh, it's a good thing I'm good at those. Minecraft, my boy. Okay, let's see. Cool, I have a... Alright. That's eight. Oh my god, twelve. Oh my god. Twelve. Alright. Oh my god. I'm a bard. Marin, pick a number between one and twelve. Five. Five? Okay, I'm going, as Nyx, I'm going to pick seven. Where's my d12? There we go. I rolled a three. Peter, as you stare into this mirror, you see your own face for a clear, a split second before it slowly dissolves into that same smoke that you saw Nyx turn into as you are as uh, absorbed into the mirror as well. Uh, you wake up in the same space as Marin and Nyx, surrounded by, and by same space I don't mean inhabiting the same space, it's the same appearance, it's just seemingly infinite fog. Uh. Damn it. Jez. God damn it. <laughs> I hate this party. Yes, my dear DM, what can I do for you? <laughs> um, you are not aware of anything that's happening in nope. the mirror. As far as you know, they're just snooping around in there. The, the mirror, when you guys disappeared into it, didn't make any kind of sound, didn't make any kind of indication. 
Um, make a perception check. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jess doesn't notice anything. That is a 12. Okay. That was a 6 um, plus 6. <laughs> that's not bad. Um, so you kind of glance toward the mirror and for a moment you're kind of like where are they why haven't they come back what are they doing but that is quickly um your train of thought is kind of quickly interrupted as a chime of the bell occurs once more oh no <clears throat> okay i have to roll the dice again why okay you um clutch your ears you kind of bring the children next to you and cover their ears so you're all uh sheltering yourself from the initial toll and jez you notice the same thing as you noticed the first time that the mirror that your teammates disappeared into doesn't move um but as you uncover your ears and kind of uh, check on the children to make sure they're okay, you hear a screech from the hallway in which you came, and approaching you at a rapid pace is the wyvern from the initial room. You, This is the first time you've encountered it, I believe, correct? Yep. Okay. Wow. This oh, is gonna... God. And you are going to roll initiative. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a four. It's a four? Yeah. Okay, toss toss a four in the dice rolls chat for me, please. Okay. Well, don't worry too much about it because the cyber rolled a two. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus abandoned. Christ. We've abandoned our boys. <laughs> The children do not uh, join you in the combat. They see the wyvern and scramble uh, to the nearest corner. It's along the same wall as the um, mirror mm -hmm. that they emerged, that the girl emerged from, the one that your teammates went into. Mm -hmm. um, and they just huddle in the corner, kind of. You hear them whimpering and cowering a little bit in uh, fear. Hold on one second. I'm going to change the pace of our music here for a quick second. Well, there we go. Enter combat mode. Mm -hmm. I think. Yes, it is playing. It's just much fainter than the other stuff. Okay. Um, so, Jez, you are first in the order, one-on-one, one v one ing this wyvern. What would you like to do? Uh, can I... I'd like to just probably yell at the kids to get into the room. Okay. And... Pulls out their staff, their uh, quarter staff, and uh, oh God, let me double check how it's pronounced again. Shillelagh. Thank you, <laughs> Shillelagh. <laughs> I got Shillelagh <laughs> on their staff. I don't know why I struggle with that word so much. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. And I think that's all I can do. I, can I make an attack on the thing as well? Uh, what does the shillelagh do? Uh, I'll throw it in the spell.
Okay. I think you just, do have a it's a bonus action, action, so you should be able to attack. Yeah, you can still attack. It's a bonus action. Oh, cool. Cool. So we're gonna roll to attack, I guess. Take a swing Oof. at the wyvern. Okay, so you're just gonna whack at it with your core staff? Yep. Take a, take a stab at its nose. Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna what, pop I, it. I just wanna pop it. try and be it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hate you all. Um, <laughs> be a distraction <laughs> while the kids get out of sight. Okay. That's a natural 18. I plus plus three, I think. It doesn't really matter what plus because 18 beats its armor class. Well, that's comforting. So, um, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, while you're rolling damage, I'll describe what happens around you. Okay. You yell at the kids to hide in the room and before you turn to face the wyvern again, you see almost a fear flash uh, across their faces, and they kind of exchange a glance. Mm -hmm. And they actually don't obey you. Fuck. Well. Um, they stay huddled in the cor uh, corner as you sprint up to this wyvern and take a crack at its snout. It's it's jaw unhinging almost to let out a terrifying screech in your direction. Eight damage. Okay. Hold not, on, let not, me... not the greatest. That's <laughs> fine. Let me quickly jot that down on my handy whiteboard that I have now. <clears throat> Okay, it is the wyvern's turn, mm -hmm. and it is going to uh, lunge at you and try to bite you. Um, does a twenty-two hit your armor class? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that is 14 points of piercing damage as it sinks its teeth into your uh, arm, the same one that you just used to uh, smack it across the nose with <laughs> your quarter staff. Great. Uh, and it is going to then... Uh, it's going to kind of shake you for a moment in its grasp and then throw you a little bit and make a second attack with its stinger. Alright. Wait, wervins have stingers? Yep. Yes, yep. They what? Do on they definitely tails. do. That's a 24 to hit. You can bet that also hits. If a 20 hit. Oh god, we failed just <sighs> Eight piercing damage. Um, make a constitution saving throw. Constitution. Mm, not great. Nine. Plus. That's a twelve. Okay. Um, mm. this is good job, guys. Sorry, <laughs> that's fifteen points of poison damage. Yeah, we're hurting. All right, that's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Okay. And with that, we're going to return to the top of the order as the young girl 
that you had previously charmed becomes uncharmed and picks runs and picks up her dagger and makes a lunge towards you, Jezebel. Oh my god. We yeah? fucked up, guys. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, she rolled a nine, so... That does not hit. Oh my god. She seems to have some issues with depth perception as she's missing one of her eyes, so as she goes to swing at you, she kind of whips the air next to you and makes a frustrated, uh, like, half-screaming noise through gritted teeth as she uh, turns to look at you with... Uh, and you notice as... Actually, make an insight check real quick. <laughs> insight. That's a 12 again. Okay, as she turns to look at you, you notice that, um, unlike what she seen, like, what her expression seemed like when, uh, Peter had charmed her, um, her eyes seem to almost be, uh, completely black, and you think, you're not sure, but it sounds almost like there's a faint whispering coming from her, though her mouth is not moving like any words. Okay. And with that, it's Jess's turn again. <laughs> okay. Um... Jess is going to... Move so their back is to one of the walls. Okay. And then we're going to try this. I've never had to do this before because Peter usually does it. Actually, that's a lie. I think I've done it once. But Dispel Magic at 4th level. Dispel Magic 4th level? Yeah, we're going to... Okay. Try and get this to stop. Um, what does this dispel magic just um just like when you cast at a higher level, it dispels a higher level spell, right? Yeah, yeah I believe. Uh, it increases the DC. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe if it's um, depending on the num the level of spell slot you use, um, yeah, that affects the DC. I think. Okay, for each spell of fourth level or higher on the target. Oh yeah, yeah, if it's higher than the yeah yeah yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay, um. So do I roll? I think Matt rolls. I can roll, I guess. Make an ability or, check. No, I guess it's yours. Yeah, make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, so I'm supposed to roll, add my spellcasting ability? Yeah. It. It's like a normal spellcasting, like... Okay, cool. Sorry, that's a dumb question. Uh, no, very good. 15? 15? 15. Okay. I think that just dispels it. So, um, yeah, you cast this and you watch as the wyvern, uh, turns to make another attack at you, but right before it can approach you, um, it starts to material, uh, like, dematerialize and it fades away. Uh, and the wyvern is no more. However, uh, on damage, I believe. Um, however, the girl is still going to try to make an attack towards you. Uh, do you, is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Okay. So the girl, uh, spins around and lunges at you with a dagger. Uh, the boy in the corner seems kind of terrified, and he's he has not made any move. He's kind of huddling in fear. <laughs> she rolled a five, so it still doesn't hit you. 
Uh, she seems to be growing more frustrated with herself, and there are um, tears kind of building up in the corners of her of her eye. Um, and she stumbles towards you and completely like whiffs again. And it's your turn. Um. Crap. Uh, the the boy doesn't isn't making any move to be like aggressive, right? No, he looks scared of the other kid. Of the girl's uh, behavior, yeah. Okay. Um. Jazz is gonna, I guess, move a- around the girl, snag the boy off the floor, and hippity hop through the magic wall into the room where the rest of my party is, I guess. Okay. Jez, you run and snatch up the the young boy and make a beeline towards the mirror, and he seems to um, struggle in your arms. I'm going to need you to make a strength contest against this child okay. as he tries to wriggle Whoops. out of your grasp. Uh, strength Right. It's a plus zero, so that's a 16. And I rolled in that 20. So oh, as oh you uh, approach <laughs> the mirror, um, the boy actually bites your arm, and well, you uh, flinch away. I, I should specify that the boy is not biting your arm because he's behaving the same way as the girl. He, bite, he He's biting your arm because he does not want to go into the room with you. So he um, bites your arm, which causes you to suddenly release your grasp on him, and he stumbles out of your arm and seems to take off kind of down the hallway. Do you con- wish to continue going into uh, the room where your teammates are? Um, fuck. Uh, y- yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess. Jess, you're gonna lose my boy. I I know. Our but Jess thinks you can help. <laughs> Jess is like a hundred percent sure that you guys are still in there, and are gonna be able to help them. Okay. <laughs> Jess, you um, it, it takes you a moment because you're a little disoriented from the events of what happened, but you um feel your way down the wall until your hand passes through it. And then you, uh, as well, enter this room, and it is your first time seeing it. So you are now standing in the entrance of this small, seemingly childlike nursery room. Uh, and your teammates are nowhere to be seen. Uh, guys? There's no response as you call out quietly. <laughs> Uh, Jez, oh man, I, at, at the risk of being redundant information, just because I don't know any of it, can I investigate the room? Yeah, go for it. Okay. You, if you, maybe if you roll a higher check than Peter, you'll find some. Okay. Well, with my rolls of the night, well, that's better. Okay. Uh, investigation is a 19. Okay. You start to check around the room and you find all the same same things that Peter did. The drawings and the the personal belongings that don't seem to really indicate anything in particular. Um you also don't really recognize the name in the le- the the letter that you find. Um You notice that there doesn't seem to be any dust really in this room, so from that you kind of deduce that this room is being taken care of, and it has been taken care of recently. Someone has been frequently frequenting this room and keeping it clean. Um, and just as you approach the drawing of the girl following the red cloak, suddenly Thana appears in front of you, and it catches you off guard for a moment, because 
for a second, it looks like the girl who stole Gunby. But then you kind of uh, realize who it is and the fact that um, she is a ghost and not a physical girl, it must be Thana. And she appears in front of you and goes, Wait! Please! You can't. You must leave this room. Where? Uh, why? I... Uh, I can't remember anything from before I came here, but I remember this room. And I remember that mirror. And she looks over to it. And you see kind of, um, uh, make a perception check. Okay. Mm -hmm. 16, 20, 20, 20, uh, wow, math. 22. 22? Okay, mm -hmm. is that a, just a modified 20? Uh, no, uh, 16 plus 6. Okay, okay. Um, so, uh, you actually glance at Thana in front of you, and you notice that the reason that you kind of mistook her at first for the other little girl who stole your friend um, is that her she has now changed a bit. She doesn't look quite like this the first time you encounter her. She has long black hair similar to that of the other girl. And you can see poking out from underneath the hair for just a moment you see the short pointed ear of a half elf before her hood kind of falls back towards her face again and it's concealed. And as you kind of follow her gaze, you notice for a moment something flash across the mirror and then you see another face kind of appear in the mirror and they all look miserable and you see a hand come up and kind of drag itself across the surface of the mirror though it curls all the way as it's grasping at nothing and there isn't a surface that it's pressing against um but from this angle you cannot see your own reflection and so nothing quite no, nothing happens when you look towards the mirror um She so turns back to the girl's you. name. Crap. Or <laughs> you can never remember it. Yeah. I got this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> it begins with a C. <laughs> um, Cecilia. Thank you. <laughs> Cecilia. <laughs> Does it help to remind you that Cecilia literally means blind? <laughs> you know, really? because really? you yeah, definitely it told me that several times. So no, it doesn't help. <laughs> and for some reason, I always come up with Coraline. That's literally the first thing that comes up to my head. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a different spooky thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Your <sighs> Tana, where, where's the rest of my party? You, you don't know? I, I haven't seen them. I thought they were with you. Are they not in the other room? No, they came into here and then. Oh no, 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 no! They came into here. That means we must break the mirror. This. It is the only way to save your friends. Are you... are you a hundred percent sure of that? Wait, wait... I... I think so, I... It's wait, all... Uh, all I can think of, it's... If your friends came in here and they looked into that mirror... Then... If they're missing, they're... They're inside the mirror. 
Uh, and she kind of, like, quickly, like, puts herself in front of you between you and the mirror, and you can still see the mirror through her, mm -hmm. um, but it is a little bit obscured. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes, but you mustn't look. You mustn't look into the mirror, or you could end up like them. Oh. Okay. <sighs> All right. Um... <laughs> Jess, who still has their quarterstaff out. Um, it takes a step, not around her, but like to the side of her, so that they're kind of standing adjacent diagonally to the mirror, and he tries to hit that out, hit that shit out of the park. <laughs> Sorry, Just kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, takes a swing at the the glass on the mirror, like it's a baseball. A very large baseball. Uh, so they're taking a swing? Yep. Okay. Uh, let me just pull something up real quick. Mm. Okay. The DC of a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How strong is this mirror? Probably stronger than me. I'm trying to see what happens. The world explodes. Okay, guys, I see, I see, I see. Okay, uh, make an attack roll. Okay. Oof. Also, out of curiosity, um, is your oh, just... your quarter staff? What kind of damage does it do? Technically, is it bludgeoning? Um. Yes. Okay. And it's got, uh, the, it's, I haven't let go of it, so I still have Shillelagh. Yeah, because I haven't let go of the weapon, it still has Shillelagh on it. Uh, so, instead of a spellcasting ability, instead of strength for the attack, okay. Uh, so that's a th 12. God, I'm rolling a lot of 12s. Wait, I lied. It's a 15. Okay. Uh, you swing your quarterstaff towards this, uh, mirror, and it hits with a firm impact, and you hear, um, a large cracking sound, as glass would make when struck with a blunt weapon. So go ahead and roll damage. Let's see if we can do better than we did last time, guys. Plot twist, this mirror's gonna hit back. <laughs> You're just gonna grow arms. God almighty. Uh... Do I add anything to that? No, I don't. Okay, that's two. <laughs> that was a really bad roll. Two? Yeah. Okay. Um, out of curiosity, when Jez walked up to strike this mirror, how did they approach the mirror? Huh? I said they came from, like, the side, so they're actually standing to the side of it. It's literally like, you know how you play t-ball in, like, middle yeah. school because baseball yeah. is too aggressive? It's so, like the mirror is the T, and they're off to the side of it. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so, you uh, crack your quarterstaff against the surface of the mirror, and a large crack kind of splinters down the uh, from where you impacted. Um, and there's a small, like, shattered dent there, but the mirror holds fast and uh, doesn't seem to completely shatter and you catch a glimpse of another face that appears in the mirror and it kind of looks like Peter but then it dissolves into another child's face and you're not quite sure maybe it was just a child that looked like Peter um what would you like to do next Thana um from behind you goes again do it again 
I'm glad that we think alike because Jess is just gonna keep hitting it. Okay. Um. Oh, that's a little bit better. That's a. Seventeen, eighteen, twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one to hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that hits. So go ahead and do uh, attack as you bring uh, kind of adjust your grip on your quarterstaff and crack it against the mirror again. All right. Uh, A bit more I... resolute. Yeah. Jez is not. First of all, I don't know if it matters, but Jez is one of those people who closes their eyes when they take swings, they, okay. which is what I did when I played t-ball, because I was I was very bad at t-ball, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> uh, so that's seven points of damage, though. Okay. I just feel um, like I this... needed to clarify that. This time, as you... Um... You crack your quarter staff against this mirror and you hear a splintering shatter as it uh the crack that you created the first time uh crawls the rest of the way across it's splintering off into several other little until the entire is there's no discern you couldn't see a discernible image if you tried and after a moment of it seeming to hold together for one last moment it seems to almost sigh as uh pieces of glass uh sprinkle to the floor and the mirror melts away from the wall and you see Thana's eyes kind of widen as she looks down at it and then looks at the wall and kind of stares at the blank backing of that once held the mirror and she goes you did it Oh, fuck. I've just... Damn it. <laughs> she almost seems to look around the... She almost seems to look around the room uh, expectantly and then you can kind of see her excitement fade to dread. And she goes, I don't understand. That was supposed to work. Uh, Jess, who's had their face crunched <sighs> up? Oh my god. open their eyes. Looks about the room. Looks absolutely distraught. <laughs> Marin, Peter, and Nyx as well. Three of you move about uh, this infinite gray space not really not really going anywhere although are, did any did any of you try anything while you were in this space um no, I, well especially considering Peter does not have dark vision mm -hmm. I'm sure he's very distraught he's probably pretty unnerved just like padding his way around, but that's probably as most, much as I can think of. I don't okay, even have so light. I'm a fool, I didn't even really... have light. <laughs> he's not really wandering or anything like that. Oh, actually, can... Could I pull out a torch and light it? Yeah, you can pull out a torch. Okay, I light the torch. Does it Does it still illuminate the area, or am I still... Um, it illuminates unnatural? the area, but it's not really like dark. It's not just darkness, it's like a fog. So this is like a thick cover. Right. And while you can, again, still see about like 10 feet in front of you through the mist, 
Um, there's nothing to see. There's nothing past it. As you kind of move a little, uh, lighting around you, you don't notice anything. Um, but as you kind of stand there with your torch, suddenly uh, the torch light goes out and everything around you is swallowed with darkness. Uh! Mar Marin, did you try anything while you were in this space? Um... I think just look around for a very long time and then um, eventually start like very, very slowly like walking a little bit aimlessly and trying to cast message to Nyx or okay. Peter or Jez or anyone. <laughs> Jez, question. Does a uh, message work across planes? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's a cantrip. That's what I thought. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't you sure. You have to be within 120 feet of the person. Oh yeah, that's that's true. I forgot it was a ranged spell. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of like sending. Um. Okay, so uh, you call out to Nix or Peter or anyone, and there's no response. Um, as you so. continue to wander aimlessly, uh, you kind of feel a hopelessness set in, and you fall to your knees as the fog around you turns into a dark blackness and swallows you uh, within it. Nix's reaction. Oh. Hello, connection. Thank you. Um. Am I breaking up for people? Nope. No. Okay. My my connection is like making the uh music super wonky, so I wasn't sure if I was cutting out like the music. Uh, no, yours. Oh. Hold on. Nice um. <laughs> Oh. You seem to be fine again now. Okay. Um, Nyx's instinct was to sprint, essentially. Um, and he calls at the top of his lungs, uh, Marin, your name. He screams it into the darkness. Um, he feels something deep inside him that he hasn't felt for a long time since before he met you. Uh, and he slows down as he notices his arms growing darker and darker as this black kind of rigid coarse fur begins to cover his body and he lets out a agonizing scream into the nothingness and there isn't even an echo to respond to him as blackness consumes him suddenly the three of you are blinded by a brilliant white light as your eyes open once more and come into focus, you take a moment and kind of gather yourselves and realize that the laying side by side and Peter, you glance to your left and see yourself reflected in a mirror. And as you three of you gaze around the room, you are actually in the room that you were in before you entered the nursery. So you are just outside the nursery in that larger uh, area. Marin, you regain consciousness 
and regain your bearings and uh, before Nyx can react and crush you in a hug, uh, you notice to your side uh, the hunched over figure of a of a girl. She's not really hunched. She's she's standing, but she is uh, leaning forward almost in like it's reminiscent of how a goblin stands, kind of. Oh, no. it does, she does have like a hunch to her back. Um, and she is screaming and furiously pounding her fists against uh, different places in the wall. And she's like making her way around the room, pounding her fists against the wall. Uh, but then you are distracted from that as Nick sits up and uh, Peter, he grabs you too and he like crushes the both of you in his arms and he goes, Oh my god, I, th I thought... I thought I was going to be trapped in there forever. I thought I had lost you too. I'm, I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. Peter, Peter doesn't say anything. He's just crying. Jez, you hear um, from outside the room uh, the screams of the girl, and uh, you hear a familiar voice yell. Oh my god. Uh, Thena perks up again and goes, It worked. It did work. Oh, thank god. It worked. Uh. Jazz. Who is probably also crying. Uh. Gonna run outside the room and just fling themselves at whoever they see first. <laughs> I leave that to your discretion. <laughs> well, it's probably just a heap because Marin is clinging on to Nyx. Yeah, it is a heap of crying boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nyx looks up as uh, you kind of make your appearance known, Jez. And he, uh, lets out, like, a heavy sob as he kind of, like, extends his reach to include you in this group huddle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of crying kids. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Jez is probably... Oh, God, what? I'm trying to... Yeah, just... Crying and... Occasionally, there might be a word in there that makes actual sense. They're very stressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to get out of here. We need to get out of here. We need to be fucking... I can't. <laughs> you are... Well, okay. Nyx, um... He's like, it sounds like he's kind of agreeing with you, Peter, but it's all garbled as he kind of sobs and like, he's loosened his grip on you and Jez a bit as you guys kind of seem to be uh, discussing a course of action. Uh, and so he loosens his arm off of you and just wraps it around Marin and is like sobbing into your shoulder, Marin. You hear him kind of mutter like I thought I thought I lost you <sighs> Me too Um Jez and Peter you are kind of shaken from your um, kind of emotional state. Uh, Marin and Nyx are a little too distracted, um, but you hear a kind of shriek, like a... It doesn't sound quite human, but it... 
it's definitely not it definitely came from the young girl who is pounding on the uh walls and she reaches a panel i believe it was jez the first time that you guys entered this room uh peter you're the one who noticed the actually who was it who noticed the panel that the child came out of initially uh i think it was me because she attacked me first that's right um so peter it was the panel that you saw uh the first time that right. you entered this room um she's reached it and as her fist comes down to strike it um you see um for a moment uh her fist stops as it hits the mirror um and it doesn't make the sound that you'd think it would make if she hit glass. It makes like a dull thud noise. And then suddenly that mirror fades away and sitting in its place is a mimic. <sighs> um, and it uh, moves to attack. I'm trying to like uh yeah, it moves to attack the young girl. What do you do? Okay, so it moves forward to attack the young girl. Uh da, 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 da. Is she uh Fuck where's where did I put my sheet? There it is. Okay. Uh Well, I, I, I uh, attack it. I'll just attack it with my, uh, my right. rapier. You kind of watch as this mimic manifests in front of you. The mirror uh, closes around the girl's fist as what seems to be thousands of teeth appear and a long tongue comes out uh. to wrap around her wrist, pulling her towards it, and you run up to attack. What are you attacking it with? Uh, just my, just my rapier. Okay. I will... Make an attack roll? Yeah. I will also use, um, hold on one second. That's why we have our stuff up, guys. Okay. <laughs> um. Also, yes, I'll okay. say, because you, it's focused on the child and it's not, fo it's not really notice noticing you, this is almost like a surprise attack. Okay. Um, uh, was that with advantage then, or... How do you want to work that? I think it just, uh, surprise attack just means you get, like, a, a free round, right? No, you oh. roll it with advantage. Oh, you do roll with advantage? Okay, yeah, yeah go ahead, roll with advantage. Okay, awesome, cool. Alright, uh... Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so... Christ, okay, nine plus, uh... Nine plus eight, that's seventeen... Uh, yeah, 17 to hit? That hits. Okay, okay, cool. I will also use, uh, expend one bardic inspiration die to do bonus damage with, uh, psychic blades. So okay. first, that's 1d8 plus... and then, if I remember correctly, that's 2, yeah, 2 d Okay, so 19, 19 damage total, uh, 13, specifically 13 piercing and 6 psychic. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me do math for a hot second. Let me, let me let the calend the calculator do math for me. There we go. <laughs> Just so I don't take a million years trying to subtract that number. He was getting okay. real tired of this creepy circus. Um, getting real fucking tired. <laughs> Peter, you lunge towards the mimic and uh, it makes a weird, like, 
pained noise and kind of like jerk sideways as your rapier just pierces straight through its side and as you pull like back your blade when you uh, use psychic blade is it something you're muttering is it like a enchantment on the blade itself with psychic blades i believe let me read the discussion when you hit a creature with an attack you expand much but you deal um you gain the ability to make your weapons attacks magically toxic to a creature's mind so i guess the or i don't yeah it doesn't specify that i say anything it sounds more like it momentarily makes the attack of the weapon magical okay um so i'll just say um you watch as the blade kind of almost glows for a slight moment um as you pull it back out and um a spurt of blood follows after it not quite the normal red color that you would expect from a humanoid creature um yeah. and it squeals and seems to release the girl uh and we're gonna roll initiative um nix after hearing seeing peter from the corner of his eye kind of sprint um towards the creature he looks up and sees what's happening and kind of rubs his eyes and uh stands in front of you marin and okay. looks over at you, Jezebel, kind of bracing to join the fight. So, uh, anyone who wants to join the fight, if it's all of you, roll initiative. God yeah, damn it, Nick. Go. Oh, good. Nineteen. Okay. Sorry, one second. Alrighty, so we have Peter and Marin. Peter has a higher initiative roll, uh, uh, initiative bonus, so he'll go first. Uh, quickly roll for the mimic. That was actually not too shabby on the mimic's part. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, okay, let's see here. One second. Yeah, no worries. Too many, too many. Okay, I was run I was writing the initiative down. My bad. And we are gonna go with. Alrighty, um, it is Peter Stern. Okay, 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 uh, let's see, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Mm. Let's see here, looking at my spells, looking at my, oh, ooh, actually this might be handy. Um, he will cast, uh, Phantasmal Force, which is a level 2 spell. Okay. And let me pull that up for you. Phantasmal Force. Oh, Jesus, it's long. Uh, blah, 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 an Illusion. The target must make an intelligence saving throw. Okay. Um, 
Here we go. Oh god. <laughs> Is that good or bad? That's a seven. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, that'll, that'll fail. Um, on a failed save, you create a phantasmal object, creature, or other visible phenomena of your choice that's no larger than 10 feet, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty only the target. Blah, blah, blah. Click sound, blah, blah. Unless you use Oh, okay. Um, let's see. What could I come up with? Oh wait. Why is he? Wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. Is it not? Oh, okay. Uh, the welcome to the future. You turn your turn because it feels okay. Um, can I using phantasmal force create what appears to be uh, like an ogre? So, okay. illusion, yeah, a phantasmal, yeah, a cre object creature of your choice that's no larger than a 10 foot cube. Um, I'm hoping ogres aren't that big. I don't think oh. they are, <laughs> I don't think they're over 10 feet. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I create basically an illusionary ogre that's only um only perceivable by the target. Uh and an effect of so I can see blah blah blah, I can take damage from the illusion. Fan yeah, an effect the target is so convinced by the phantasmal's reality that it can take damage from the illusion. A phantasmal phantasm created blah 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 blah. Each round your turn the phantasmal the phantasm can deal one D six second damage to the target. If, okay. it is, but if it is the within five feet, of, yeah, okay. So basically, okay. if it's within five feet of it, uh, it takes one d six second damage. Um, target can uh, use that attack to, to examine. The... Sorry, go on. It... Does it apply to the first round, or is it every round after? Um, it each... doesn't really specify. Yeah, it just says each round on your turn. Um. um... I'm going to say that it doesn't affect this round because actually, well, it it did it did fail its initial intelligence save. So I uh, go ahead and do a one d six psychic damage. Roll a die for that. Cool. Um, this creature like is clearly not Great. um <laughs> paying attention to you or the girl anymore. Entirely on. Uh, yeah, focus entirely on your illusion, and uh, seems to be kind of not quite, like, terrified, but um, definitely, like, hesitant and if, almost, like, confused. Um, okay, and is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and next up is Marin. So I was reading the spell description. You're A-OK. -okay. Um, I am going to pull out my Wand of Magic Missiles that I've had this whole time. Okay. Um, and I spend three turns on casting it at, uh, third level. Okay. So let me just, uh, roll 6d4. <laughs> oh, that one's in... Oh. Uh, that is 17 points of force damage. Okay. Give me a second. All right, uh, you hit this uh, mimic with these, is it uh, three magic missiles at that point? Or six, I guess, right? Six. Yeah, six. So Let's strike you, um, all uh, of those. Step out from behind Nyx, uh, pulling this wand from your bag or your uh belt it's yeah it's pretty much my belt and teeny tiny your bag of wand it. holster um and you um cast it towards the mimic um nick's kind of glances at you um and you see um his face is like he looks terrified um but these six beams emerge from the end of this wand 
Um, it kind of gleams when you cast it. Um, and they fly towards the mimic, and it wails in pain as it kind of uh, tries to shake off the impact, but it hits him uh, one after another, uh, dealing him a decent amount of damage. He looks a little charred and still very confused. <laughs> um, and with that, it is his turn. So, um, he is going to... I literally don't quite understand what this action is. It says pseudopod, but it doesn't specify what that means. So, he's just gonna make a movement. This is, a uh, kind of just interesting because he's going to attack Peter, but Peter's Detroit is in the bathroom right now, but I'm going to see if I can discern whether or not it would hit Peter. <laughs> just based on how good or poor the roll is. Um, That was a 16 uh, plus 5, so 21, and I'm pretty sure that hits Peter. So Peter is going to take um bludgeoning damage as this creature whips around and tries to knock his sword from his hand. Um, very distressed. Um, he is also, after that, going to make an intelligence saving throw, but welcome back, Detroit. Uh, you're being attacked. Joyous me. Let's go. <laughs> I forget how much HP uh, I have. Not a was, lot. Let's go. It was successful because I rolled a 21, so now I'm rolling damage. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to take nine points of bludgeoning damage as it mm. whips around and tries to knock the sword from your hand, which it doesn't quite, uh, succeed, but you do feel, like, the, it wasn't a very, like, precise hit, so it just kind of whacks into your body in general, and you take the brute of this force, uh, the brunt of this force, and it's also going to make an intelligent saving throw as it kind of, uh, Scree screams toward uh, the illusion made. Um, is a sixteen? Does a sixteen beat your D DC? Uh, oh, for the uh, for the for intelligence the investigation. Yeah. Oh, uh, but 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 you said sixteen. Yeah. No. It doesn't beat it. It does not beat it. Whew. Jesus. Um. Okay. Uh. So. That is the end of his turn. Uh, Marin, you hear a scream and watch as this girl uh, oh, runs towards uh, you. Oh, yeah? Actually, uh, I'm sorry. It does, does it have to beat it, or does it, or if it meets it, it succeeds? If it meets it, it succeeds. Yeah. Okay, it, it, it does meet it. My DC is 16. I got it okay. Up. So, um, it, uh, can discern that your illusion is an illusion, and it's no longer, um, confused or afraid of it. God damn it. Um, Marin, you hear a scream and wa and suddenly turn and see the young girl, um, sprinting towards you at full speed, speed, a wild look in her eye as she swings at you with her dagger. Um, that's a 19 to hit. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, so sure you... do. Okay, so it's okay. Um, so you feel, uh, her blade immediately make contact with your side. You weren't expecting this attack at all as this is the first time you've seen this girl behave like this since you've encountered her the first time. And... Sorry, I am looking up the damage die for a dagger, even though I... D4. Um, Plus dex. Because of this young girl's um, hindrance, her the fact that her eye's uh, missing still, and she doesn't have a very good uh, depth perception she kind of grazes you but it's enough to do um 
two points of damage, uh, piercing damage. Mm. And you see a small uh, cut start to leech blood down your side. Uh, and it is Jez's turn. It's, uh, what is, sorry, I, is the girl still attacking people? The girl just attacked Marin, okay. um, and then Peter's being attacked by the, the uh, mimic. Mimic, okay, cool, sorry, I blanked on what was happening with the girl. Um, just, can I just give her a friendly bop on the head with my staff? <laughs> okay. She <laughs> I'm gonna hope that an 18 hits. Uh, an 18 definitely hits her. Okay. Uh, plus seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, you whip around and see this girl uh, lunge at Marin and uh, slash him across the side, and you. Uh, bring back your quarterstaff and crack it down over her head, and she recoils with a uh, angry shriek, but then she looks back up, up at you, and uh, you watch as um, blood starts to trickle down her head and a little bit from her mouth, and she spits out a tooth and uh, kind of growls in your direction. That's not how you play nicely with others. <laughs> uh, it is Nyx's turn, and... Seeing this girl, uh, attack Marin, he is going to lunge towards her and try to knock her away. With his beast hand? Hmm, works. Um, Marin, you kind of notice. Uh, actually, make a perception check real quick for me while Nyx takes his turn. Um, so he's going to lunge past you and swat at this girl instinctually. You see him kind of bare his teeth as he does so. Uh, 16. Okay, um, as he lunges past you, you um, kind of look on uh, a bit panicked, and you notice that um, his beast arm has kind of crawled up uh, to encompass his entire uh, right arm. And you even begin to notice a few... Um, it almost seems like the fur is thick enough to be scale-like crawling up his neck a little bit, peeking out from under his, uh, crop top. Uh, and he lunges past you. I'm gonna make a attack roll. Uh, but she has a higher AC than that because he garbage at everything. And he tries to bat her away, and she kind of dodges, um, with what seems like inhuman speed, but it might just be the fact that she seems to be in a manic state. And he growls at her and takes another swat at her. Uh, but she evades him as he lunges. Uh, and you... Marin, it's almost scary. You see, like, the... Hair, you see like a dark hair form on the back of his neck and starts to raise almost like hackles on a dog. Uh, and his skin is kind of fading uh, away from that natural color that his uh, glamour charm usually conceals and dulling down to an almost gray color. Not quite his natural color. But it is definitely, um, 
a darker color than it normally is. And with that, um, it is the top of the order again with Peter. Detroit? God damn it, I forgot. <laughs> I keep forgetting that it's on me. I'm sorry. Um, okay. It's my turn, right? Yep. Okay, I will cast um, I will cast Dissonant, Dissonant Whispers using a level 2 spell slot, which basically means um, the target must make a Wisdom saving throw. So we'll see that first. All right. Give me one second. I need to switch back to the stats page. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh, that's a seven. Okay, cool. On okay, well at high levels, one d six. Okay, so four d six psychic damage. So we're gonna roll that first. Please. Okay, seventeen. Seventeen psychic damage and okay. the cre um uh, yeah. Okay, so seventeen psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction to move as far as the speed allows away from me. Okay. The um, creature doesn't move obvious into obviously dangerous ground. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm just like, uh, get off me! You, um, with, like, cast the spell, and the words from your mouth start to kind of echo, and it's a familiar sound as it's one of the, um, obstacles you've had to deal with this entire time in the maze. Um, but this time it, uh, attacks the creature in front of you, and it wails with pain and lunges forward, making a beeline down the room, and it runs about 15 feet away from you, um, but makes no sign of stopping. Thank god. Alright, cool. That'll be the end of my turn. Okay, Marin, your turn. Uh... Fuck. Um... <sighs> Seeing the mimic run, um, I'm gonna turn to Nick. Mm hmm. Nick, stop it. And I'm gonna grab his arm. Okay. Um, we're going to make a strength contest to see if you can kind of. Fun. Like, restrain him, I guess? Dude, yeah. Oh. Mm -mm. What'd you get? Seven. Okay, I got a 13. Um, you go to reach for Nick's hand arm, but he is too focused on defending you from this, uh, child. And when you touch him, he kind of, like, instinctually, uh, and it doesn't seem as if he's really hearing you speak to him. God, did you hear that? Sorry, there's a guy, like, hacking the hallway outside. Um, it, uh, that is going to count as your action. Would you like to make any kind of movement? Nope. I'm okay. Good. Um, that means it is the Mimic's turn, and the Mimic is going to turn, disengage, and continue running down the hall, um, out of sight. Uh, and it is officially out of the initiative, as it has retreated from the So with that, the child makes a blood-curdling shriek and lunges towards you, Jez, in retaliation, um, to your attack. Mm. Mm, that's a six. Not hit. Hit. Don't believe hits you. So uh, she lunges, but her uh, she seems to have blood dr trickling into her good eye. <laughs> um, so she's kind of swinging blindly now as she tries to uh, pierce you with the dagger and just hits the air. Um, she doesn't seem to be doing very well at all. 
Um, and with that, it's Nyx's turn. Who um, goes to once uh, once again lunge towards the child? God damn it, Nyx! Um, the child evades the first one as he moves again, and that is a nat one. So on the second attack, so uh, as Nyx uh, actually lunges forward to attack Mary you hear a sound that you have only heard once before in a dream and you watch as uh, more of Nyx is consumed and a uh his face almost seems to elongate and be covered into this shadow as a um, long snout appears with uh, bearing teeth and his teethling horns kind of morph and crack into an almost antler-like appearance. And um, he has seen... Uh, it seems as if he is starting to lose himself a little bit. Um, and with that, we're at the top of the order again. It's Peter's turn. All right, all right. Um, oh, man. Nix, you don't look too good, pal. Oh. Let's see. What can I do? So it's just a girl left, correct? Yeah, the only like active combatant who is opposing you right now Sorry, you you cut out right when you said the only person is the me girl. Right okay. Okay, let's see. Um, ba ba ba. Well, gonna guess I'll cast uh, use another first level spell slot. Cast charm person. Okay. Uh, must succeed a wisdom saving throw with advantage if I am currently fighting it. I don't know if it counts if like I haven't like directly engaged it in combat yet or. Uh, you're like in initiative with it so i'd say this counts as combat okay because it's hostile towards you right uh so well she's hostile towards you right so i guess she has advantage on this uh that's a 17. uh all right so i try my best um, to magically calm this child using charm person but it fails yeah so you cast this and it seems for a second as if she kind of um perks up as if she's hearing something being said to her. Uh, but then she shakes her head and kind of looks around uh, almost as if of, almost as if she's looking for the source of the uh, voice that just tried to sway her. Okay. Uh, and with that, it's Maren's turn again. Um... So, we have talked ex extensively about how um, that dream affected Marin. Can I make a a save to see if I can do anything this round? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a, what would you say, a wisdom save? I, yeah, I think it's probably a wisdom save. Yeah, go for it. And I'll just let you make a DC. God, that was in that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Marin, you. Christ. It it takes you a moment. Um, before it kind of sinks in. And your brain kind of puts two and two together, and you realize that that beast that you saw in your pleaded with you to kill it was the beast that you know your friend has carried with him nearly his entire life the entire time you've known him and this is the first time you've ever seen it consume him to this extent and despite 
your best efforts despite what you wish was true that you could look at this monster and still see your best friend still see that person that has been by your side for the past 10 years of your life you're terrified and you'll have disadvantage on everything uh remaining in this initi- uh, remaining in this initiative um and um you actually retreat the extent away from you. Fuck. All right. Until your back hits the wall behind you, and you try not to turn your head to see the reflection of him in the mirror. Um. So you are in a state of frightened. Uh, with that, it is the child's turn. Um, not being able to place where the sway came from, um, is just going to try and attack you again, Jess. That, uh, as you're the last person that hit her, I should say. Um, does a 12 hit? Uh, no. 13 is my armor class. Okay, so no, it does not. Uh, She takes a swipe, and you step out of the way. Uh, Her movements are slower than it was at the beginning of this fight. Um, She seems to be tiring a little bit. Blood loss Um, will do that to you. Yeah, and the blood is continuing to uh, actively drip down her face. Um, And she seems to be a little off balance. It is Jez's turn. Um... Can I, can I, like, grab her arm and try yeah. and pull the dagger out of her hand? Yeah, uh, make a strength check and I'll contest it. That's a natural 20. That's a 9, so, <laughs> um, as, as she kind of, uh, uh, lunges towards you this previous time and misses, you take this as an opportunity to catch her off guard and you reach out and grab her hand and just the sheer force of you grabbing her arm shocks her a little bit and she drops the dagger and begins to try and writhe against your grasp but she can't quite um make it and she's considered i guess technically grappled um and is unable to move from your grasp Okay, um, Jez is gonna tuck that sharp pointy object into their belt pouch, I guess, carefully, okay. or maybe just tuck it, like, against their, it's... they're gonna put it away somewhere. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, gotcha. And just... Uh, I guess. Mm. I wanna. Oh, God, sorry. I'm trying to see if I can make her stop attacking me. <laughs> Would you like to make a uh, perception or an insight check? I'll let you make either one. Sure. Okay. Uh, I, you said perception or, no, we're gonna go perception, I guess. Because, actually, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's a 18. 18? Yeah. Okay, um, as she, um, just, like, rides in your grasp and, uh, actually tries to, like, snap at your hand a couple times with her teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, you feel something kind of dense, like smack into your arm. And you notice that she is still wearing that necklace that was similar to the boys when you... Am I cutting out? Mike? Yeah, yeah a little bit. A tiny cool. bit, yeah. Sorry. On, She's wearing a necklace similar to the boys. Okay. 
hopefully I don't cut out because I'm trying to describe something, but yeah. Um, she is wearing an identical necklace um, mm -hmm. to the boys when you first found him, and that is kind of uh, bouncing around her neck as she struggles. Um, and with an 18, you can hear the uh, slightest whisper, um, and it is coming from... It, it seems like it, it's coming from the girl, but again, she's not speaking. Okay. Um, but that's gonna, like, you've taken an action this term, you grappled yeah. her. Yeah. So that's, like, the end of your turn. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it's Nyx's turn. Um, okay, I have to make an intelligence saving throw. Equal to 8 plus half my intelligence modifier. Okay, so... I have to beat a 10. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, oh my god. <sighs> Next. Next pal, buddy. Intelligence saving throw. Okay. This is smart. Um, he rolled an eight, and his uh, eight plus half his intelligence modifier is a ten, but his intelligence saving throw modifier is seven, so that is a fifteen. You watch kind of as for a moment, um, Nyx kind of stills. And a deep rumble seems to come from within his chest. And a dark smoke kind of leeches out from his skin. Uh, and suddenly his hands fly up to his face. And he lets out a deep roar. And um, you watch as he kind of slumped. Um, his his posture, like, all the tension in him kind of releases, and you watch as he kind of fades back into his natural, the, the Nyx that you all know, his regular form. And that is Nyx's turn. Uh... I'm going to say that initiative is over. Actually, no, because the child's still attacking. So, Peter, it's your turn. Would you like to do anything? Or hold your turn, or... Uh, make an action. I If you're speaking, you're muted. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, every time. <laughs> um, well, since since Peter has failed to magically charm and subdue the child he is going to he's going to hit her with his rapier but he's going to hit to subdue so like hitting with the like the back of the hilt okay so not non-lethal damage yeah non-lethal damage yeah okay okay Go ahead so and move the attack. Uh, but, uh, that's a uh, yeah okay uh 13 oh uh, that hits okay cool and then Oh, jeez. Okay, 11. For the again. Not only four. Okay, um, you whack her up the side of the head, and she, uh, being focused on Jez, um, doesn't really see you approach, and so as you crack her against the hull, she immediately goes and falls unconscious in, uh, Jez's arms, but it's not, it's not the dying kind of unconscious, it's just the actual, like, loss of consciousness. Uh, so she stops struggling in your arms, Jez. And nice. she's just kind of like, Jez is like holding her wrist, and she's hanging from Jez's grasp. So... Fuck. Uh... Jez is gonna very gently suffer so she's not hanging by her arm. Okay. <laughs> um... And then crouch down next to her can, and take off the necklace. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say we gotta take off these necklaces. Okay. Um, 
Peter, you watch as uh, Jez lays her down and snaps the necklace off of her neck. Um, as you guys kind of look at the necklace, it seems to be... It's made of a gray metal, like a he kind of a heavy gray metal. Um, but it is shaped almost like a human tooth. It's a little bit long and scraggly for a human tooth. But uh, it is a tooth nonetheless. Does anyone does have identify? Sorry? Uh, so I was gonna say, does anyone have identify? <laughs> uh, nope. I... No, wizard didn't have that much forethought. Uh, I... Jez, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have identify. It's a bow. I'm pretty sure it's strictly a wizard spell. Okay. I think it might be, yeah. Uh... Because it's a ritual. Okay. <sighs> Alright, you are out of initiative. <laughs> Congrats, nice. guys. Amazing. Does anybody remember, out of curiosity, what the other necklace looked like? It, was that one also a tooth? I believe it was. I do not remember at all. Also, do I need to make that spell? <laughs> Sorry for random noises. Um, like yeah, that. go ahead and make another. Uh, now that you've kind of witnessed Nyx returning to his form, you make another wisdom. Mm. Oh, my wisdom stink. Um, 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. Um, you. Are yeah, wise. you you save so um you kind of watch uh, through um kind of a blurred gaze as you didn't quite realize it but at some point when you fled you started to cry a bit in fear um it's not something that you were voluntarily doing it just kind of happened um and uh you are once again staring at that familiar back that you have looked at so many times as he led you through alleyways uh held you against it as he hid you from sight um nights you've curled up against it it is the back of nyx Guys, we need to... I... Oh, also, Peter, while, while he's, like, uh, shaking, trying to talk, he's also grasping his gut slightly from where the Mimic bit him, because he is currently standing at uh, 12 HP out of 55. So Marin's also clutching his side where the fire fucking stabbed him. Um, um, I'm on 8. Christ. Nyx <laughs> looks up uh, after a moment where he was just kind of standing there, um, his body returning to its natural form, and then he pulls his hands away from his eyes, and he kind of looks around frantically. He sees you, Jez and Peter, and he's like, Where's Marin? Is he okay? Is he alive? Yeah, yeah, just... <sighs> he, he's like wincing a bit of trying to clench the pain, but he just simply points over over behind him towards Marin. Uh, Nyx, like, whips around and sees you, Marin, and he, uh, rushes towards you to check on you, and, like, starts, like, immediately trying to inspect you to see if there's any wounds. Mm. I just lift up the hand. Marin is staring at his beast hand. No, 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 I, I just, I lift up my hand. Oh, you lift up your hand. Covering the cut. Okay. Are you lifting up a hand to stop him, or? No, 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 just to, he, I know what he's doing. I'm showing oh, him. Oh, okay, 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 so you're showing him the cut, I see. I'm sorry. Um, he, um, he looks over at you, Peter, and, uh, Jez as well. 
uh, and he's like, everyone, um, let me make sure I can do this before I actually say it. Uh, hello, please tell me, Paige. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he's, he gestures and he's like, everybody come here. Yeah, Nyx, are you gonna, are you gonna be alright, man? I'm fine. Okay. Nyx is fine. He has 30 HP. <laughs> I don't uh, I think that's what he meant, but like, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Nyx doesn't know what you're talking about. Doesn't know he changed? Doesn't know? Not really. He knows that he was in a state of heightened, like, anger and fury, but he's not aware, uh, of what, quite what happened. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. You... Would you just come here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, he makes his way over. Um, Nick's like is kneeling next to Marin and um is like y your freehand Marin that's not currently holding the blood into your body. Uh, he's kind of like gripping with his normal non beast hand. Um, and Peter, as you come, Jez, as you come forward as well, he uh kind of holds onto your hand, uh, Peter, he's your hand with his beast hand, and this might be the first time he's ever you've ever touched his his hand. His beast hand, yeah. Yeah, his his cursed hand. So as as he kind of grabs your hand, um, you notice that like it's it's a very strange texture. It almost feels as if you're holding the claw of an animal. It has yeah. very coarse fur. Uh -huh. And seemingly underneath the coarse fur seems to be like a hardened skin. It's it's very scaly and dry underneath the bits of fur that are uh, growing out from between the kind of cracks of the texture of his skin. It's it's a very strange um, feeling, but it's not painful or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just unusual. Um, and as you guys gather around, uh, closes his eyes for a second, and then begins to, uh, radiate a warm yellow glow from his body, and as he does this, you feel a warmth washed over all of your body, and Marin, you look, lift your hand and notice as the cut begins to heal under your hand, Peter, you, um, feel that pain in your guts start to ebb away. Uh, Jez, you uh, regain a little bit. Like, are you, how injured is Jez? Jez has 11 hit points. Okay. okay. We're all, we're all uh, digging. You, did, uh, did the girl, the girl never successfully stabbed you, right? Yeah, no, that's all from before. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so you just kind of feel like this fatigue that you've been carrying with you this whole time melt away um, as some of your um, injuries from earlier on begin to fade and heal. And now I'm going to roll the actual healing. Uh, where is my d12? That's a dice that I rarely use. Ooh, not a bad roll at all. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Um, everyone gain. 22 points of HP back. Thank God. Thank God. Oh. Uh, as you feel this warmth uh, kind of wash over you, it's it's almost like, despite everything, uh, this feeling that Nyx is granting to you all feels comforting. Um, it feels like the same sensation as finding a nice sunny patch of grass and lying out in the sunlight. Uh, 
and that feeling, uh, you hold that with you for about a minute, maybe 30 seconds, it's hard to tell. Um, and then the glow from Nyx fades, and he, um, opens his eyes and looks around at all of you, and he goes, There. That's... That's the last time I can do that. We need to find the proprietors. We need to stop this now, because I... Peter Peter is like, he's shaking, he... he's not really... I mean, it's hard for him to make eye contact as it is, because of his statue, <laughs> but he's actively avoiding, like, eye contact. He's very, like, obviously anxious. Just like... Mm -hmm. I... When I was... when I was in that mirror, I... I couldn't even remember the sound of the ocean. This... all of this... I'm getting tired of this shit. We need to, we need to find these fucking proprietors. We need to fucking. I don't care what we do to them. I need to get out of here. What was that? I can't keep walking around in a hall of mirrors. Yeah. No. Fuck this place. Um. Nyx looks at you, Jez, and goes. Where? I have so many questions. Um, as he says this, actually, uh, um, uh, actually, first he's, he, yeah, he's gonna go, I have questions, first of all, where, where is the boy that we were with? Oh, right, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> our boy, no! <laughs> We abandoned our boy. We abandoned our boy. My boy. <laughs> um, go ahead. Jess, where? Murray is just like suddenly panicked and standing up. What happened when we were inside the mirror? Uh, so Jess has been quiet this entire time and is looking. Mm. They were crying before, and they're kind of crying again, because this is all their fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, they kind of turn, like, partially away and start furiously, like, rubbing their face with the sleeve of their jacket. Like that'll, you know, like that'll hide anything. They all already know. Uh, <laughs> but kind of points See. down the direction of the hallway that he ran. Or, the direction that the boy ran. Because I think I saw that before I uh, got. Yeah, you saw you saw it. Yeah. Um, Nick's kind of furrows his brow and looks in the direction you're pointing and he's like, he... he ran off? He ran off where that... thing ran off? Uh, as he's... when he refers to that thing, he's talking about the Mimic. Uh, -huh. uh that also fled down the same hallway. Oh my god, Marin's running. Wait, <laughs> Oh my god, Marin's running. <laughs> no! Oh. Um, okay, so Marin takes off. Nyx is like, Wait, Marin! And then, um, immediately, like, starts following after you. Um, he's actually gonna make an attempt to stop you. So if you are going to resist that, we'll make a strength contest. We can make a strength contest. Okay. With Marin's zero strength modifier. Good. What'd you get? 14. 14? Yep. Okay, uh, Nick's only rolled a 12. Uh, right, I'm so, running. Uh, he lunges out to try and grab your arm, but you are already, uh, you taking off kind of surprised him. And he, uh, misses and just starts chasing after you as you run. And he's kind of yelling after you and he's like, Mirren, wait, we have to make a plan! Um, 
And if you recall, um, this hallway was kind of different than the rest of the hallway. It, it started as narrow like the rest of the maze, um, and then kind of just widened into a larger room. So as you're running, um... Oh my god, the body was back there! Uh, your reflection is kind of, um, getting closer and closer to you, and closing in around you. Um... And... You make your way, um... Down the hallway, but, uh, are quickly stopped as you, uh, see, uh, a figure up ahead. Um. You can't tell quite from the distance you're at right now, um, whether it's moving or not. Oh, boy. <laughs> he wants to know how big it is as well. Uh, make a perception check. It's the familiar Marin doesn't have. <laughs> 17. Um, as you continue to kind of approach it, uh, you notice that it is definitely, uh, smaller. A small creature. Okay. And you rolled, like, a 17? Yeah. Uh, you recognize the um, black kind of bodysuit that the child was wearing. Fucking... I'd say the, the, ch the child from you is about still like 20 to 30 feet ahead of you, like 20, 25. I'm still jogging up. Okay, so you approach rapidly. Um, yeah. You quickly cover that space uh, with Nyx hot on your heels. Um, and as you approach the young boy, you do notice that he is breathing, but he um, is, n uh, after a moment, you do notice a dark kind of pool uh, coming from underneath his body. Um, and he is, does not seem to react when you approach, though there is a slight sign of life, uh, from the rise and fall of his, uh, back. Okay. And I'm gonna drop on my knees and... Can I can I check him? Can I see what where yeah. the wound is? Uh, make a medicine check. We must know the status of our boy. Holy shit! I'm proficient in medicine, and I always forget that. Um, twenty one. Okay. Um. You carefully lean down and kind of turn the boy very gently, just so you can kind of examine him, moving him too much. Um, and you notice that uh, it almost seems as if, like, he was hit in a drive-by manner, where maybe he was running and the creature came up behind him and just kind of battered him out of the way. Um, it seems as if he, uh, some of his ribs are a bit broken. And um, the blood is coming from his... Uh, one of underneath his rib cage. it seems as if there is a gash, whether it's from impact or from the creature itself is unclear, but it's pr still profusely bleeding. And unchecked uh, will be fatal. Okay, I'm ripping off um, I'm gonna rip off I guess 
the bottom of this already shitty spare shirt I'm wearing. Okay. Um, let me see if I can use bandage. Okay, uh, with, I, I'm gonna count it as the same medicine check. With the with your 21, you are able to stop the bleeding and stabilize him. So he is no longer actively bleeding out, Nature. but he is still unconscious. Uh -huh. And uh, Nyx actually leans down next to you, Marin, and um, digs his hand into your bag and pulls out the healing potion. And do we have? One? Oh shit, we do, don't we? You do. I do. Holy shit! Yeah, I do. Um, I, <laughs> I grab it from Nyx and I pour it in his mouth. Okay, um, you pour this potion into his mouth, and it takes a moment, but you, uh, suddenly hear him kind of cough and, uh, gurgle a little bit, and his eyes flicker open, uh, and he looks up at you, uh, wide-eyed and a bit, a bit frantic, but when he sees that it's you, he relaxes a slight bit, but not entirely. He still seems to be kind of glancing around and making sure there's no danger nearby. Um, did I give you specific stats for that health potion? Um, it's just, it's a regular health potion. Yeah, so I, you roll a die, correct? Yeah, or does is it, it for a regular one? It might be a d4. D4. Let me get roll off of this. There we go. I'm googling it. Potion. It's 2d4 plus 2. 2d4? Okay. Plus 2. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I mean, you're healing him, so you get to roll the die. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god, double fours. Hell yeah! Ten points. Um, you actually watch as, um, he, as this potion kind of, like, he begins to ingest it, it begins to do its work, um, you notice, actually, that in your grasp, you feel his, like, uh, bones, like, even, like, stiffen up a, a little bit as if they're magically being repaired. Um, and after a few moments, you are able to pull back the uh, makeshift bandage that you've just made, and the wound is completely gone. Uh, and he seems to be restored uh, to his full health. Okay. He's safe in all this. Um the child nods and kind of reaches towards you. I hug him. Uh, as you hug him, he kind of, like, stands up, like, kind of pushes forward a little bit and wraps his, like, around you, uh, burying his face in your shoulder. He throws us back. Okay. Um, Nick's kind of, he rubs, like, your back? <laughs> uh before standing up and looking back, and he goes, We should go back immediately. Yeah. And I'm gonna pick up my boy. Mm-hmm. Peter, Jez, um, uh, as this is happening, uh, -huh. uh, Peter, you look up at Jez, who is kind of preoccupied with blaming themselves for everything. Um, and over their shoulder, through the mirror, uh, that you know to conceal the nursery-like room, uh, you are shocked for a moment as you seem to see Celia, uh, Cecilia appear from behind the mirror, um, <laughs> but as you kind of, as the figure approaches, you realize that she is floating, and, um... It is actually Thana. Oh. 
I'm sorry, you said it's actually Dana? Okay. Yeah. Ugh. Uh. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of my noggin real quick. I was like, which one was Dana again? <laughs> The ghost girl. All right, the ghost girl. Right, Dana. What? You. Uh, where are the proprietors? Like, just. She um. Points upwards, and she goes. You, you met them already. They're the ones who sent you here. And. I'll take Rick. you to them. We're ending this. I... Yes. I want you to. Don't you understand? I'm... I'm trying to help you. All of this, this it doesn't... Oh, it's seeping into us. It's getting in our heads. I just can't... I know. I'm sorry. I... I tried to warn you. But I, I was selfish. I what? I wanted you to come back. That's why I gave you the glass. I I thought you and your friends I thought you all could be the ones who'd finally be able to free everyone. What are they capable of? What are they what are they plotting? What do they need these kids for? What happened? What's going on here? Clearly they're collecting children here. Clearly It's You've seen them. Uh and she actually walks over to Jez and uh do you are you still just kind of like clutching the necklace from the girl? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, she she points towards the, the necklace in your hand, she goes, It's how they control them, the kids. She lures them, well, they lure them in here, and treat them kindly. They take on the form of an old, kind, grandmotherly lady, and entertain the kids, give them sweets, give them everything they could ever want, and their final parting gift is this totem. But that's how they speak to the kids, and that's how they sway them and per convince them to return to the circuit, to leave their families, and to disappear. And they're essentially kept here as slaves, as free labor as well as a source of food what kind of handsome gretel shit is this you've <sighs> seen them haven't you those are not they're not women they're not of any kind of human they're monsters and that's it they don't have emotion they don't have compassion or or love they have nothing they just hunger and when they're hung when their appetite is satisfied they hunger for something greater they hunger for power and this place this forest it's giving that to them but in all the time that I've been bound here for as long as I can remember, and I can't remember how long it's been. This is what what is happening now, and the amount of power that they have harnessed is beyond anything they've ever done. And I wish I could help you more and tell you what exactly they're capable of, but you have to understand when I woke up here, the extent of the damage that they were causing was 
luring children in here and keeping them here and tearing them away from their families was... It was horrible kidnapping and... And... At some times, murder, but... It was never... This... This... Force of darkness. something to feast on we're ending this we're, we're... as she says that um Marin <sighs> and Nyx uh return to the hallway uh the young elvish boy in uh Marin's arm uh and Nyx kind of walks up to the rest of the party Jez uh what, what is Jez's like expression right now how are they looking? Um, they're they're staring at Thana. I mm, something doesn't line up for me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Um, as. Nyx kind of rejoins the group with Marin by his side. He um, looks up at Thana and then looks at the rest of the party and he goes, We're getting out of here now. And he points uh, his beast hand towards the wall and you notice time uh, out of everything, the chaos that ensued these last few minutes behind where the mimic had originally appeared there's a door more fucking pathways more fucking damn doors uh and that's where we're going to end the session ah! tonight uh. um thank you all so much as always for playing thank you to anyone who joined us for the stream uh happy to be streaming at our regular time <laughs> The first time in a while. Uh, but I had fun, and I hope you had fun. And I drank all of my uh, honey ginseng, <laughs> ginseng green tea. Um, so, we're gonna wrap up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, thank you, Emily. Thank you, and we will see you all next week. Have a good night. See you. Bye. See ya.